In this video, we're going to talk about dimensioning sketches. While sketching in Solid Edge is similar to SolidWorks, dimensioning can be significantly different. So let's take a look by starting a simple sketch. I'm going to start by sketching a simple line and keying in a value of 2.5. By default, Solid Edge doesn't add the dimension to the line, but I've changed a setting that allows it to apply an actual dimension when you key in a value. That setting can be found on the IntelliSketch options, Auto Dimension tab, automatically create dimensions for new geometry and make sure it's set to the only one geometry is created with keyed in values option. From here I want to keep sketching so I'll toggle A to get a tangent arc. I'll use references to get the horizontal tangent point and then more inferencing and I'll finish this off with another tangent arc. But notice that the tangent arc is only tangent on one side. Solid Edge is putting the sketch relationships right on the line. So we've got a horizontal vertical, horizontal vertical. These circles are tangents. But here we just have two endpoints that are connected. To create the tangent relationship manually, I first press the tangent button and then click on the entity that I want to move and then click on the reference entity. It doesn't always work out that the first one you select actually moves, but when the relations allow it to work that way, that's the way it happens. The sketch relations in the relate area are mostly similar between SolidWorks and Solid Edge. Most of these will look familiar. The one that's different is horizontal vertical. Let's sketch some more lines. Remember with Solid Edge you press the tool first and then the entity. So I click on the horizontal vertical and then click on the line. The line is going to snap to whichever relation is the closest horizontal or vertical. So for this one, it'll snap vertical. If I click on this, I'm going to have a problem because it will overlap the horizontal line down here. If you want to turn off the display of the sketch relations, you can turn off the relationship handles and that will toggle those off. But I think seeing them is fairly unobtrusive and it gives you a lot of good information. Okay, now let's look at some dimensioning scenarios. I'll use the smart dimension for most of the work I'm going to do, just like in SolidWorks. If I click on this line, it's going to give me the length of the line. That's pretty understandable. You always get the opportunity to change the value immediately. If I click on this line, Solid Edge is going to allow me to get the horizontal or the vertical length of this line. To get a dimension like the original, I have to change the orientation of the dimension. And I can use automatic for that. Automatic will follow the angle of the line. If I press A on the keyboard, this will also give me an angled dimension. I'll escape out of this to show another angled dimension possibility. You, again, using smart dimension. In SolidWorks, we would click on two lines. So I'll click on this line and this line. But by default, Solid Edge is grabbing the nearest endpoints of those lines. There's two ways to turn this into an angle dimension. One would be to use A on the keyboard. And to switch back, I'll use A again. The other method would be to use the angle setting in the properties. And that will allow us to apply an angle dimension between these two lines. Let's draw a new line and use it as the basis for the direction of all of our new dimensions. So I'm going to sketch a line, pick up the center of this arc by pressing C on the keyboard, and this arc also by pressing C on the keyboard. Click the line and convert it to construction. And now I'm going to use the dimension axis tool. I select the tool first, read the prompt bar, click on a key point or a line, 
and so I'm going to click on this line. So now Solid Edge understands that this line can be used as a dimension axis. So let's try to apply a dimension using that as an axis. I'll click on this arc and this arc. It's just giving me horizontal and vertical between the centers. But if I change the orientation to use dimension axis, now the dimension will be parallel to that line. I could set this back now to horizontal and vertical, get the length of this line, and now it's back to its original orientation. Remember that Solid Edge has two colors for dimensions, red dimensions and blue dimensions. The red dimensions in Solid Edge are similar to the black dimensions in SolidWorks. If I click on a red dimension once, it's going to give me the ability to change its value. And it shows the lock symbol here. So a red dimension is a locked dimension, and that's also known as a driving dimension. The blue dimensions are driven dimensions, and these are just like gray dimensions in SolidWorks. If I click on this one, it doesn't allow me to change the value. If I click on it again, it will allow me to change the value. But if I do, if I make it say 1.5, notice that the geometry didn't change and Solid Edge added an underline, meaning that this dimension is not to scale. If you double click a dimension, Solid Edge kicks you into the Edit Formula interface. You can rename dimensions, write formulas for them, and add comments. Let's pick up a couple more dimensions, again using the smart dimension. An arc by default will give you a radius value, but you can change this to a diameter value and place it. In order to dimension between the tangents of these two arcs, I'd need to start my dimension tool and switch to tangent and then click on the arcs and place the dimension. So you can do every just about everything you want with the Smart Dimension tool. You need to use the modifier over here for orientation and sometimes one of these buttons for the type of dimension that you want to apply. Thanks for watching.